Hey there, welcome back to Offshore Audio. I'm Andrew and this is the channel where I'm bringing you tips and tricks to help you mix better live events. Today I'm going to talk about routing of audio signals inside a digital mixer, specifically the sort of M32X32 framework here. Now, nothing's more important than getting the sound into your mixer and getting it out where you intended. It's horrible when you don't know what you're doing and you pull up the faders and you don't have any sound on them. You've connected the microphone, you're sure, but there's no sound in the fader. On analog mixers, it's super easy because, you know, XLR input one corresponds to channel one. You know, you plug it in there and it goes straight onto the fader. But with digital mixers, you need to sort of marry up the input to the actual channel fader. And there's a little bit of work that you have to do. Normally, a lot of digital mixers come with a sort of default setup so you can just get going, but it's really this flexibility that makes them so great. So it's really important that we know how to set them up properly and also diagnose problems properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to briefly cover the sort of concept of marrying up these physical inputs to these sort of virtual inputs in the mixer. And then we'll move on to exploring the actual routing inside the X32, M32 operating system and how all that works. And we're just going to step through each page, page by page on the routing screen. And I'll explain to you exactly what happens on every single one of those pages. So by the end of this video, you'll be totally comfortable routing inputs to input channels, getting any output you want out of any XLR or jack output on the mixer surface or on digital stage boxes. Before we get started, once you get your inputs into the mixer, one of the things you're going to need to do to them is apply EQ. And if you want a quick start to getting great EQ, then you can download my free three-step guide to perfect EQ. And it's just a PDF guide with sort of my philosophy on getting started on EQ. It will give you actionable steps to immediately get going with EQ and make EQ decisions easier for you. You can grab that at offshoreaudio.no forward slash EQ. So without further ado, let's dive in. So we need to start by acknowledging the different way of working from analog consoles. On analog, it was a physical connection between the XLR connector on the console and the channel fader that we operated, which then went straight to the outputs. On digital, I like to think of it as this like sort of physical realm and the virtual realm, right? And you have a selection of physical inputs that are connected somehow to your mixer, right? That could be the local inputs on the actual mixer itself. It could be a stage box connected digitally by AES50 in the case of these mixers. It could also be via the card input on the mixer, which can be Dante or USB. And on top of that, there's the auxiliary inputs on jack and RCA. Now, all of these make up what I like to refer to as the physical input world. These are the entities that you connect the audio signal to. You connect your XLR cable, you connect your jack table to these physical inputs. But there's a problem here. The physical inputs go into the digital realm, into this mixer, they're digitized, and then they're disconnected. They float about. They are not directly connected to the virtual inputs, what I like to call the virtual inputs inside the digital realm. So inside these mixers, there are 32 input channels, and there are also six auxiliary channels. And we can cherry pick whichever one of these physical inputs from the physical world we want to connect to these virtual inputs. So you can look at it like once you connect your XLR to that mixer, there is still another connection that needs to be made inside this mixer. And you can think of it like drawing a line from these physical inputs to these digital inputs. So if I show you a diagram with a whole bunch of XLR inputs here and all the digital virtual inputs on the mixer, Essentially what we're doing on the routing screen is we are connecting these up to each other and we can connect them in more or less any order that we want to. To get signal in and out on one of these mixers, you need to connect something to the physical input and then you need to connect that physical input to a virtual input in the digital realm. Similarly, on the way out, we need to connect a virtual output to a physical output so that we send our signal from our virtual holding place to a physical XLR or jack connector 
and then we can connect that signal further. Now, X32 and M32 mixtures have a sort of notoriously awful routing screen, right? I don't know why they do it. It's just, it quite, it's quite hard to get your head around. And I'm gonna try and keep this video concise, but there's a lot to get through and there's a lot of ways to think about it. So keep that in mind and let's move on to the actual routing screen. We started off by talking about this idea of connecting the physical connections to these virtual connections, right? So let's start off by looking at the input screen, right? This is the first place you're going to come to when you press on the routing button. You're going to come to this input screen. These numbers here, 1 to 8, are representing the input channels on the mixer. These channels, 1 through 32, plus your auxiliaries. So what this means is that what physical input do you want to arrive on channel 1 to 8 on this mixer? So when you turn up fader one on this mixer, what sound source do you want to control? Local here represents the inputs on the back of this mixer. So if I were to select local one to eight here, that would mean that on my first bank of faders down here, I would have the first eight microphone preamps on the back here. That would also mean if I selected local nine to 16 on this, if I set the mixer up with this, with basically each fader bank representing the local equivalent, so 1 to 8 being local 1 to 8, 916 being local 916, that means that basically this is a standalone mixer. All of the inputs on the back correspond directly to the inputs on the mixer here. So that is all of the physical XLR inputs on this console right here correspond directly to the channel faders. We don't often use it like that. We quite often use it in conjunction with a digital stage box. And you can see over here, I have two digital stage boxes connected, right? I've got one in a rack in a cupboard and I have one by the stage here, A and B. I might change this so that all of my inputs are now represented by the one in AASA. That is our device that's connected into input A on the AAS ports on the back of this mixer. But it is a digital stage box, which is in a different location. I could do that with AASB. And you see that we have options to connect up to 48 channels on AASA. So we could, for example, daisy chain these two boxes and have both of them come in on AASA. Another option for me right now is I could have my first 16 channels come in on AES-A, that is the rack in the cupboard, and I could have my next come in on AES-B. So what this means now is that channel 1 to 8 on my mixer, on my fader bank down here, is currently fed by channel 1 to 8 on AES-A. Channel 9 to 16 is similarly fed by channel 9 to 16 AES-A. However, channel 17 to 24 on this mixer, so when I select my fader bank, 17 to 24, it is now AES-B channels 1 to 8. So that's the first eight channels of my AES-B, my stage box, which is by the stage. That will now come into channels 17 to 24. Similarly, channels 25 to 32 will be receiving microphone signals from channels 9 to 16 on my stage box on the stage, which is connected to AES-B. So we have a total of 32 microphone input channels here, but we also have bonus auxiliary inputs. On the back of this mixer, we have six auxiliary inputs on jacks, but we can change these channels. These auxiliary channels are just input channels. And similarly, we could set up these auxiliary input channels here these six channels here, we could set them up to receive signal from either of our stage boxes or even the six local inputs. So if you see now, what I have done is I have set up the first 16 channels of my mixer here are receiving sound from AES-A. That is my stage box in the cupboard, in the rack. The next 16 channels are receiving sound from AES-B. That is my stage box on the stage. And then my auxiliary channels, I've decided that I don't want to use them for jack inputs. I have changed them to be the local XLRs. That is the XLR inputs on the back of this mixer. So now I have 32 channels of XLR, 16 in the cupboard, 16 on the stage, and a bonus six channels of XLR on the back of this mixer. Another input source that you can choose to feed input channels on the mixer is what's called card. And that's simply a 32 channel USB card that is installed on the back of this mixer. But basically, if we had a PC or a Mac connected using this USB card, we could send up to 32 channels of audio on that Mac. You could set your mixer up to just receive audio from the card over USB. And if you did that, 
all of your 32 channels here would be return channels from your PC. So this is useful in the live setting for things like virtual sound checks, audio from QLab or something like that without using a jack cable. You could also bring those cards in on your auxiliary, auxiliary layer. So similarly, like before, we could have all the microphone inputs on our stage boxes, and then we could bring six inputs on on our auxiliary channels. Right, now let's get into the meat of it. Let's get into the output routing because this is where it can get a little bit more confusing. There are quite a few output screens. This is actually the only input screen. If we page over here, this is AES-A outputs. Page again, AES-B outputs. Page again, card outputs. Again, XLR outputs. And then if you go even further, you get to what's called the patch screen. We are going to start on the patch screen. We're returning to this idea of virtual and physical inputs. And if you look here, we have 16 outputs. But these are actually virtual outputs. Currently, these outputs don't correspond to any physical location. I can use the screen to send a sound source to these outputs. And it is a virtual holding place, which we then connect a physical output to. And I'll show you how that might look. Currently, output one, we're going to set to mix bus one. And I've got a little notification down here that says this output is currently not assigned any local analog output. Please check the XLR tab. What that means, so mix bus one is being sent to this output one, this virtual holding place. To connect it to a physical output, we go over here to XLR and you see these numbers up here. These numbers now represent the physical XLR outputs on the back of this mixer. So by selecting one to four and five to eight, the XLRs on the back of this mixer correspond directly to outputs one to eight on this output screen. So if I send mix bus one to output one, mix bus one will come out of XLR one on the back of this mixer. And you can see over here, it shows you what the actual physical patch is. And so take a good look here. Output one to four, output five to eight, output patch overview, right? If I change this to output nine to 12, these completely change because they correspond to the outputs that I have set on this screen here. So just to recap that, these 16 outputs here are sort of virtual holding places and we can select a signal to send to these virtual holding places. We can then use another screen to collect that signal and send it out of a physical output. This screen here is where we collect outputs to send out of the physical XLRs on this very mixer. However, remember we have two stage boxes, one in the cupboard and one on the stage. AES-A was our one in the cupboard. Now these are just generic screens. I only have eight outputs in the cupboard. I can choose to send output one to eight out of the physical XLRs one to eight on this stage box. Now remember, output one to eight is a sort of virtual holding output. What I mean by that is that anything could be in output one to eight. We define what is in output one to eight on this patching screen. Now this gets pretty confusing because we could, for example, have outputs one to eight come out on the first eight XLRs of that stage box, while we have outputs nine to 16 come out on the physical XLRs on the back of this mixer. That means that we have the possibility for 16 different outputs using this screen, and we can assign half of them to one place and half of them to another place. We can do the same with AESB. Now I know that AESB, my stage box on the stage, has 16 physical XLR outputs. I can choose to send outputs one to 16 out of those outputs, if that's what I choose to do. What you can do on this screen is you can change what comes out of those XLRs. And we'll talk about changing that in just a minute because there's one last screen that I want to show you here and that is the card. This confused the heck out of me when I started working on this mixer. These numbers up here correspond to the output channels on the card. So this is like another virtual holding place and we can send whatever we want to that card. If we select local one to eight here, what that is doing is that is sending a direct output of what goes in to the local XLR one to eight. So although this says outputs, this is currently showing inputs. What's happening here is that you are essentially 
tapping the signal that is coming in on XLR 1 to 8 on the back of this mixer. And you can tap that signal from anywhere you want. You could tap it from the stage box in the cupboard, AESA 1 to 8, or you could tap it from the stage box on the stage, AESB 1 to 8. And there are 32 channels of output here. So you could, for example, set your card output up to mirror your input screen and then you would be able to record all of the channels that you are currently mixing. What say you want to send some mixes, some outputs to that card? If you scroll further down, you see that you have the option to send outputs one to eight and outputs nine to 16. And remember, this is the outputs that we define on this patching screen. I'll quickly touch on these auxiliary outputs. This is the physical outputs here on the back of this mixer, the outputs labeled auxiliary one to six and the AES outputs. Similar to this patching screen here, you can select whatever you want, whatever mix you want or signal you want to go out of these auxiliary outputs. The difference between the patch screen and the auxiliary screen is that this is the physical output. On the patch screen, this is more like a physical holding place. P16 is just another type of output slot, another virtual holding place that you can use for personal stage monitors. Here we are at the user section. What you do here is you essentially define your own banks. So instead of selecting AESA channels one to eight, you can pick and choose where you want those first eight channels to come from. So you could, for example, have your first channel come from the local input, the XLR, the physical XLR on the back of this mixer. And you could scroll down here and have your second channel come from AESA channel one. And then you could scroll down to number three and you could have it come from your laptop, your card input one. Now you would need to patch back to your input screen, remember, and this is where we assign value to the input channels, to the faders. And you could then scroll further down and select user in. One to eight. This user input is again like a sort of virtual holding place. On the user screen, we populate these numbers with physical inputs. So these are our physical inputs and we are sending them to this virtual holding place that we're calling user input. And we set it in blocks, one to eight, nine to 16, and so on. And then we can go back to our input section and we can use those blocks wherever we want. And we have 32 channels worth of them. So we can create an entirely custom input configuration if we want to. Though to be honest, that's not something that I do very often. More interesting, however, is the user output section, which we get by touching this button here and switching to output. We can really get into flexibility here because you can see here that I have set user output one and user output two, so these virtual holding places, to be the auxiliary inputs five and six. Now let's say that I wanted to send that out somewhere. I might have already used all of my local outputs on my XLRs here. Remember this screen XLR corresponds to the physical XLR outputs on the back of this mixer. And I'm currently sending outputs nine to 12 and five to eight. And they are defined on this patching screen where we patch the outputs over here. So mixes to virtual holding place Physical outputs collect sound from the virtual holding place and send it out of the actual mix. Now, what if we wanted to, for example, send that auxiliary signal that I just defined on the user screen? What if we wanted to send that out to the laptop on the card? Then I could scroll down past the outputs to the user outputs one to eight and watch this. The output to the card is just mirroring AESB. We're gonna change the output patch. The first eight channels go into the card to the user output patch. You can see now it's auxiliary in five and auxiliary in six because I defined that over on my user output screen. So what that means is that I am taking a direct tap of the auxiliary inputs five and six and sending them further on to the card. So let's do a quick recap. I know that's pretty intense. Input, these numbers here are representing the channels on the mixer. And these blocks here represent physical XLR inputs or other inputs that we can find. We could find them locally or on the AES devices from the laptop, or we can define them ourselves using user blocks. These screens are telling us what outputs we are sending out of AESA, the XLR outputs on our stage box, AESB, XLR outputs on another stage box, card, what we are sending out to the laptop via that USB card, and XLR, what we are sending out of the physical outputs on the back of this mixer. 
the patch screen here is where we define what goes to these variable sort of holders called outputs. These words output here are just a virtual location. We send a mix or an input or whatever we want to a virtual location, and then we collect that virtual location on one of our physical outputs on AES, card, or XLR. We use the user screen to define our own blocks if we don't want to be constrained by the usual one to eight blocks. We can create user inputs and outputs. I'm thinking about doing a more in-depth series of videos about these M32X32 mixers, maybe taking you all the way from getting your mixer out of the box to running a show on it. If that's something you'd be interested in, uh, please let me know down in the comments so I know that I should make that. So let's do a quick recap. Physical inputs, physical outputs. Virtual inputs, virtual outputs. We need to connect something to the physical and also we need to marry up the physical with the virtual. We do that via the routing screen. The first screen is all you need to know about inputs. The rest of the screens handle the physical outputs. And then this patch screen is where you sort of send your mixes to a virtual holding place. I hope this has been really helpful for you. They're not the easiest mixers to understand, if I'm perfectly honest. And I hope that I've clarified this for you. If you're just getting started, please check out my three-step guide to perfect EQ at offshoreaudio.no forward slash EQ. That's my sort of three principles for getting the best EQ in the beginning, getting you moving with EQ. If you did find this helpful, please consider liking the video or subscribing to the channel to let me know to keep making more of this kind of stuff. And if you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. Anyway, for now, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.